Howdy. This video is on Lewis theory of acids and bases and metal complex formation. Lewis theory of acids and bases is the most general acid base theory. It can be used to explain many chemical reactions, including metal complex chemistry, those in organic chemistry, and many reactions in biochemistry. What you should be able to get from this video is you should be able to describe Lewis acid base theory. You should be able to determine if a compound is behaving like a Lewis acid or a Lewis base in a reaction. You should be able to describe the characteristics that makes something a good Lewis acid or a good Lewis base. And so we've talked about three acid base theories. We've talked about Arrhenius, Bronson Lowry, and Lewis. Now, Arrhenius theory is the simplest theory. If you add it to water and it produces hydronons, we call it an acid. If you add it to water and it produces hydroxide, it's called a base. Now, for Arrhenius theory, if something's an acid, it's always an acid because the test is if you add it to the water, what happens? Now, Bronson Lowry theory and Lewis theories are a little bit different. It's looking at a reaction and how is the compound behaving like in a reaction. And so, for both Bronson Lowry theory and Lewis theories, you could have a compound behaving like an acid in one reaction and a base in another reaction depends on what it's reacting with. Now, Bronson-Lowry theory, if it donates a hydronine in a reaction, then it's classified as an acid. If it accepts a hydronine in a reaction, then it's classified as a base. It's great for aqueous solutions. For Lewis theory, if it accepts an electron pair, then it's classified as an acid. If it donates an electron pair, then it's classified as a base. Now, Bronson-Lowry theory and Lewis theories are consistent. If something's a Bronson acid, it's also a Lewis acid, but Lewis theory is more general. And so if you have a Lewis acid, it's not necessarily a Bronson acid. So please remember all Bronson acids are Lewis acids, all Bronson bases are Lewis bases, but not all Lewis acids are Bronson acids. Or sorry, not all bron Lewis acids are Bronson acids, and not all Lewis bases are Bronson bases because Lewis theory is more general. Now we can actually look at a reaction. Here we have ammonia reacting with water, and we can think about it in terms of Bronsted Lowry theory. Ammonia is a base in the Bronsted sense because it acts as a proton acceptor. For example, it accepts a proton from a water molecule to form the ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. And so we can think about it in terms of bronson lowry theory because we have a transfer of hydronons. And so the water is donating the hydronon, so it's making the water the acid. The ammonia is accepting the, the hydronon, and so that makes it the Bronsted base. We could also think about this reaction in terms of Lewis theory. In the Lewis acid base theory, the emphasis is on the electron pair. Ammonia is a base because it acts as an electron pair donor toward the proton. The proton is an acid because it acts as an electron pair acceptor. And so in this case, for Lewis theory, you still have the transfer of hydrogen, but the transfer of hydrogen is occurring because ammonia has that lone pair. And so the ammonia is donating that lone pair, and so it's making a Lewis base. The hydrogen is accepting the lone pair, so it's making a Lewis acid. And so again, all Bronsted acids are Lewis acids, all Bronsted bases are Lewis bases, but not all Lewis acids are Bronsted acids because Lewis theory is more general. So we can look at this top reaction. We have ammonia plus copper ions going to a copper ammonia complex. Now, one question you could be asked is, is ammonia behaving like a bronsted acid, bronsted base, Lewis acid, or Lewis base? Now notice that there's no transfer of hydrogen ions. And so that means it cannot be a bronsted acid or a bronsted base. But what you do have is ammonia is doting electron pair to the copper. And so the ammonia is a Lewis base. Again, Lewis is more thick, more general, and so you can have something being in Lewis base that is not a Bronsted base. Now, the reaction below, we have ammonia plus HF going to the ammonium ion plus fluoride ion. Now, notice that we do have a transfer of hydrogen ions. The, the hydrogen from HF is being lost to the ammonia, and so HF must be a Bronsted acid. Ammonia is grabbing the hydrogen ion, so that means ammonia is a Bronsted base, but you know, ammonia also has that lone pair. It's using that lone pair to grab that hydronon. And so you can also think about ammonia as a Lewis base. And so in the bottom reaction, ammonia is behaving like both a Bronsted base and a Lewis base. And so if we think about Lewis acids and Lewis bases, Lewis acids accept electron pairs. We call them electrophilic. They like electrons. They attract electrons. Metal cations make good Lewis acids. An atom ion or molecule with an incomplete octet like BF3, AlF3 make good Lewis acids. Molecules with a central atom that can have more than an octet like silicon tetrafluoride all make good Lewis acids. For Lewis bases, they donate electron pairs. They're called nucleophilic. They attract, attack positive charge. Atoms, ions, or molecules with at least one lone pair of electrons make decent Lewis bases. 
And so think about ammonia as our typical weak base. It's got that lone pair, and so it can donate that lone pair, and so it's a good Lewis base. It's also a decent um, Bronsted base. Now again, here we have ammonia plus BF3, and so ammonia is going to be the Lewis base. It's going to donate its electron pair. Lewis at the BF3 is going to accept that electron pair, so it's a Lewis acid. Again, we cannot use Bronsted theory here because we do not have a transfer of hydronons, but we do have a donation of electron pair and acceptance of electron pair. Lewis acid base theory is more general than Bronsted theory because it applies to systems that do not involve protons. For example, Ammonia acts as an electron pair donor toward boron trifluoride, a molecule that has a vacant 2p orbital. Another example of reactions where you have Lewis acid base reaction is the formation of metal complexes. And so you have a metal ion, typically, and then you have a ligand which donates electron pair to form that bond. Ammonia also acts as a Lewis base toward metal ions, as in this example of a cobalt-3 hexamine complex. The ammonia electron pairs are donated into vacant metal orbitals. And so metal complex is actually fairly important. Um, porphyrins are naturally occurring polydentate ligands, and so they can hold a metal inside, and they're actually part of a protein. And so hemoglobin contains these iron two chel chelated by a porphyrin group, and that's actually how you can transport oxygen. And so you can notice that you actually have four heme group, green groups per protein molecule. If you look a little bit closer around that heme group, the green actually is the iron. And then you can see that you have um, the nitrogen, which is behaving like a Lewis base, donating an electron pair, forming those bonds. Now, oxygen can actually be transported by the iron and that's actually a Lewis acid base reaction. Unfortunately, carbon monoxide is a stronger Lewis base than O2, and that's actually how people can die from carbon monoxide poisoning. The carbon monoxide can attach to the iron, it's a stronger Lewis base, so it stays there, and so you no longer can transport oxygen in your body. Oxygen binds weakly to the iron ion at the center of a heme group in the hemoglobin molecule. In an oxygen-poor area of the body, the O2 is easily removed. Carbon monoxide, in contrast, binds very tightly to the iron and is very difficult to remove. The presence of carbon monoxide makes it impossible for the blood to transport oxygen effectively. And so again, this is just an example of Lewis acid base reaction. And so there's metal, many different metal complexes. And so here have the copper surrounded by four ammonia groups. Remember, the ligands are on the outside, the metal ion is in the center, and so ligands are Lewis bases, and so they have to have lone pairs, and so ammonia has that nice lone pair on the nitrogen, water has two lone pairs on the oxygen, carbon monoxide has lone pairs on each side, the cyanide ion, um, the nitrite ion, the thiocyanate ion, all have these lone pairs and can behave like Lewis bases. That's kind of interesting, you can get different shapes for the metal complexes, and so coordination number four is fairly common. Um, there's two different shapes you can get. You can get the tetrahedral, which is on the left, or you can get the square planar, which is on the right. And so this gives you a little bit better picture of the tetrahedral. This gives you a little bit picture, better, better, better picture of the square planar. You can also have coordination number six, and that would give you an octahedral environment. Now, oct means eight, and that's because if you um, put lines between all the nitrogens, you actually would get an eight-sided figure, uh, a octahedral, but even though you only have six nitrogens. So it's a little confusing. Six nitrogen give you an octahedral environment because there's eight faces to that object. Now it's also kind of interesting, you can have what's called polydentate ligands, and so that's where a molecule can bind to, to a metal atom in two different places. So bidentate would be two, or two bites, and so ethylene diamine here, you have two nitrogens on the end, each nitrogen can um, donate a lone pair, and so you notice that you have an octahedral environment, even though you only have three ligands, but each of the ligand bonds to the metal ion in two places, and so that gives you six places. And so there's a lot of bidentate ligands, the ethylene diamine, which we just saw, the carbonate ion, um, oxide ion, etc. You can even have some, um, a chelating agent with six 
um, places where it can bind. And so this is ethylene diamine tetraacetate. And so you have lone pairs on the oxygen and lone pairs on the nitrogen. And so that's actually six places where that molecule can wrap around a metal ion. And again, it's just a Lewis acid base reaction. The Lewis base is donating the electron pair. The metal ion is behaving like a Lewis acid is accepting the electron pairs. The EDTA is kind of cool. It actually wraps around the metal. So you can see on the right hand side, the black sphere in the middle is the metal. And then it's surrounded by four oxygens and two nitrogens. The nitrogens are in blue and the oxygens are in red. And so please remember Lewis acid base theory is the most general acid base theory that we talked about. It can be used to explain many chemical reactions, including organic, metal complex chemistry, and even in biochemistry. I hope that was helpful.